Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. If you hear a sound in the back, that's the portable heater going. Yes, it's going, and we don't want to turn it off right now. Yeah, so if you hear a strange little humming, you're not getting beeped up. You no. beeped up or beamed, beamed up. up like Scotty, right? Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> yeah, right. It's just just our... It's a, you know, it's a really cute heater. I want to tell people about it because Mike has such good style when it comes to decorating everything. He's so good. I mean, he's... It's just so good at everything and he ordered these heaters when we were in new mexico and they have like this light and they look like there's logs on the fire and there's flame in the back and it's they're just super cute and they put off heat and it, it it's we really wanted a wood stove but you know we're not in a place where we can get one right now so we ordered these they're just cute well, they're portable and they, they've worked OK. They've kept us, uh, you know, warm and yeah. thawed out in yeah. New Mexico and mm -hmm. and also uh, here as well. So if you aren't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to all three channels, Evolutionary, the original channel, EE -E Arts and Hearts Home, which is our newest channel. Of course, if you are following us over on Patreon, uh, then everything gets put up on Patreon. So that is probably the easiest thing to do. Yes, we are. Somebody had asked if we're still on Rumble. Yeah, we we, we post to Rumble almost every day. Same thing with Brightian and BitChute. Uh, so you can also watch us over there. So we're going to talk about the Yule Log. Uh, well, it's yeah. not that type of Yule Log, but Cindy was just talking about traditions, and I remember the Yule Log and our traditions uh, growing up as a little kid. I, I still remember seeing what was probably an airplane when I was like five and pointing it out to my mom and dad. I was driving in the back seat, and we were on the way back from my aunt's house because we always went to my aunt's house as a little kid, and the whole family got together there. And I remember saying, is that Rudolph's nose up there? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Well, I mean, the reality is that type of, I guess, honest little fib to a kid, it brings about some magic. But the reality is, too, uh, our traditions are are brought about by a variety of different things that we, we might not even really fully understand where these traditions come from. You know, when we think about burning a log to just stay alive in in many cases, you know, it was critical to have fire. I mean, fire was life, right? Uh -huh. Fire yeah. is life. If you if, you know, the absence of fire means you freeze to death or, you know, again, can't have clean water. When we look to our traditions and, and many people have discovered that you're holiday traditions like december 25th it really has nothing to do with the birthday of of uh, yeshua jesus because in reality he was probably born in in spring. in spring uh no it has more to do with the tilt of the earth than anything and it has to do with the seasons that we find ourselves going through and of course, at the winter solstice, it is the shortest day in the northern hemisphere and the longest in the southern. It's all about the tilt of the earth, which was not always there. <laughs> ah, that's the trick. When you, when you look to why did the ancients build Stonehenge? Why, do they, why did they build all these megalithic structures? There is another version of Stonehenge in Louisiana, for instance, that is much bigger than, than Stonehenge. You know, of course, it's, it's a mound, but it has the same function of marking these uh, axial tilts of the earth. Why did they pay attention to all that? What are they trying to tell us is really the question because they are trying to speak to us throughout time. And I do think, in, in my opinion, is they're trying to tell us it wasn't always this way. Uh, there was a major event that happened that changed everything. Actually, there's more than one major event that happened that changed everything. But in case you're, you're not aware of it, the Earth has an, an axial tilt. So if you look at the uh, you know pole, per se, the North and South Pole, and you see this 23 and a half degree 
uh, tilt, which does vary throughout uh, the precession of the equinoxes slightly, a couple, a couple degrees. Uh, it wasn't always there. Why is the earth tilted it is, is a great question. The earth has seasons. And really, again, we're celebrating uh, when we get to that winter solstice on the 21st. It is the shortest day, but in reality, why are we, we doing these celebrations? Because these celebrations are all about the return of light and the fact that, okay, we're, we're at the darkest point and now we're shifting and we're starting to come back to the light. And Earth has seasons because the axis is tilted. The Earth rotates on its axis as it orbits the sun, but the axis always points in the same direction, as you can see. So, you know, again, this is why we have these marker points of, you know, the four seasons and the two solstices and the two equinoxes. When we say equinox, basically we're saying that's the middle. Yeah, you know, it's equal. You know, you're kind of in the middle between the darkness and the light, so to speak. So this is really what um, the celebration of the seasons is about with Easter too. Um, and there's so many things. Honestly, everything is so intertwined that part of the problems I've been having lately is where do I stop? Because once you start going on a topic and literally, you know, Cindy made a suggestion because I said, what do you want? What do you really want to get across today? And she, she made a suggestion and already I took it off in a totally <laughs> different area. And yet now I'm thinking it was going to tie into the one we were going to do yesterday. And I was thinking yesterday is going to be our first one today, which is going to talk about um certain goddesses it, and again ostara which is easter and you know again this all comes back to this there have been just major cataclysms in our solar system and and this is uh, part of the reality that that people don't have a clear view on so let's look at this beginning, the beginning lines from the Enuma Elish. Now, the Enuma Elish is thousands of years older than anything in the Bible. It's thousands of years older, thousands. And we have just so many of these uh, Sumerian writings. And I do not believe that they are untainted by the system. I, in other words, I think they are tainted by the system. I think even as we talk about the fact that the Bible has some things in it that have been revised and hidden by the system, it's the exact same with these. These stories are, again, written by the victors. Because even though we're talking about 2,000 years B.C., we're talking like 4,000 years ago, it's their power structure. It's the power stru structure of the victors that was put in place at that time and even before that time and, and you know even when you say uh the victors it, it's like maybe some people might not realize who well, who are the victors well we're the victors we must have won no i'm sorry the victors that's the controllers that's the controlling establishment that's the establishment that's in place right now that is channeled up and this is where you run into beings that are not fully human they are the victors and they're going to make sure that you see what they want you to see so that you can be rounded ha, and useful to them. When on high the heaven had not been named, firm ground below had not been called by name, naught but primordial Apsu, their begetter, and Mumu, Tiamat, she who bore them all, their waters commingled as a single body, no reed but had been matted, no marshland had appeared. Yeah, you know, when we when we look to this and y you read that, some of you uh, might automatically just think of Genesis 1. And this is the Names of God Bible where they're actually trying to insert the proper names instead of just making it God, 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 or Lord. In the beginning, Elohim. Now, again, that's plural. Elohim. Mighty ones, powerful ones, the rulers, the judges, uh, you know, again, there's there's different translations that can be rendered for each uh, Hebrew word created heaven and earth. The earth was formless and empty darkness covered the deep water, the Ruach 
Elohim was hovering over the water. Then Elohim said, let there be light. So there was light. Elohim saw the light was good. So Elohim separated the light from the darkness. Elohim named the light day and darkness named night. There was evening, then morning, the first day. Interesting as well, right? Evening and then morning. And so, and it goes on to say the Elohim said, let there be a horizon in the middle of the water in order to separate the water. So Elohim made the horizon, separated the water from above from that from below. And so it was. Elohim named what was above the horizon sky. There was evening, then morning, second day. Then Elohim said, let the water under the sky come together into one area and let the dry land appear. And so it was. Elohim named the dry land earth. The water came together, named it sea. Elohim saw that it was good. And then it goes on and on. But again, it's it's talking about in the plural. And it's so easy when you hear it in the plural to start think of terraforming. Is it not? But the reality is, again, uh, there there is a reference to two creations here. Many people have talked about two creation stories in, in, in the Bible. And again, Tiamat, Tiamat, when we look to the Enuma Elish, is is the planet that Earth was, of course, Earth is just a smaller part of Tiamat. Tiamat was the mother planet, so to speak. And Tiamat was dis destroyed by the system. Earth was salvaged from that which was destroyed and was terraformed to become the new home planet. And so Tiamat was in the position where we now have the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. And Earth is in uh, the third planet from the sun position. So Earth being a smaller planet is moved closer to the sun. And this is really talking about that same thing. This is what this is talking about. You know, one of the things you see when you when you look to these different stories is uh, you'll have different gods taking pre uh, preeminence. In some, it might be talking, again, Ea here is also known as Enki. Um, and then you have Marduk coming uh, to power, so to speak, later on. And again, it depends a little bit whether we're talking about the northern kingdom of Akkadia or the southern kingdom in Sumeria and the progression, you know, again, uh, it's just fascinating to look at it because what you have here is is again uh, beings that aren't they're not the creator of all they're not the creator of this universe in fact and when we look at the literal translation it's using the plural so again that's part of the big reveal as what we have is a priestly caste that goes ahead and changes things over the centuries and so Many believe that that change happened somewhere around six to eight hundred BC, as far as in in uh, the Jewish Hebrew tradition. That's when they they switched from being quote unquote polytheists and tried to uh, hide the existence of uh, Asherah, for instance, who is thought to be the consort of Yahweh, and to also change things and start to change the translations that we see. Uh, from obvious the plural to the singular and again it wasn't uh, that hard for them to do because you got to recognize too and you know my mom would speak of the times you know well it's it's nice that we actually get to look at the bible when the priests read to us because you know that wasn't the case for the vast majority of the time that christianity was you didn't have a bible you could go check in fact, you know, the first Bibles were, were, were printed like 1,500 years after Yeshua Jesus was, was walking, you know, on the planet. Which, again, he was an actual real being, absolutely. But, again, the victors write the story, so everything gets twisted. You know, the big thing I want to focus on, though, is the fact that here we are. The ancients are telling us, remember these times remember the fact that you have seasons remember uh 
what brought that about but that's the part that got covered up is is what did bring all that about you know what was that cataclysm that ended up giving us seasons instead of what was originally and there are mythologies that speak about this a time when it was a garden of eden because it was like an eternal spring summer you know it was it was kind of eternal perfect weather so to speak right grow season for all all the time um a, a place that's very com comfortable a place that's uh very stable i think that's the word stable where all beings that were on the face of this planet could really be comfortable in their own skin w without having the topsy-turvy part of the seasons i mean i like the seasons but i'm sure when this cataclysm did happen it was extremely um, traumatic, so very traumatic. Uh, um, being in a place where you're very comfortable and then all of a sudden, you know, you're moving through all of this different weather and then you have winter in some places. Winter is just so, it's catastrophic. It's catastrophic. So that had to have been an extremely traumatizing situation. And, and then you look at uh, the aspect of the sun how important is the sun to our well-being it, it's like everything for so many people um the sun helps stabilize you it, it it releases so many hormones it's information for us to expand ourselves and then all of a sudden all this is taken away and 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 then what you know nature always finds a way and even on a strange level, we look at these holidays and we might think they're just a matter of convenience. And I think they're far more than that. I think it goes into like a tribal sense of survival where even in the darkest of times, you are finding something to be grateful for. But us as humans, I think we need to put labels on things and we need to name things and we need to give things more of a purpose than just a baseline survival technique but one thing that brings me so much joy is, is look i love the holiday decorations i absolutely love them you know just walking through the grocery store driving down the road i see you know anything that's lit up it gives me that little bit of joy that <laughs> uh, without them you know i would have a difficult time because i do think that i have a little bit of that seasonal affective disorder and and it's no fun and without these little bumps and in, in my uh, my mood without these little things to look at and, and memories to enjoy you know when we decorate and do you know we play elf for the kids and thinking back on all of those times through the seasons that helps me i know other people might have more of a difficult time because they don't have their family but no matter what i always really love and enjoy the decorations it, it just makes me happy so this article from sciencenews.org says why won't this debate about an ancient cold snap die despite mainstream opposition controversial comet impact hypothesis persists and we're talking about that period known as the younger dryas event where all of a sudden this mega uh, fauna that existed was wiped out. You know, things like these these woolly mammoths, saber-toothed tigers. And in fact, this cataclysm just devastated the planet. All sorts of people uh, and, and beings lost their lives in this time period. It was uh, a massive, massive die-off. As we read the article here, about 13,000 years ago, Earth was emerging from its last great ice age. The vast frozen sheets that covered much of North America, Europe, and Asia for thousands of years were retreating. Giant mammals, step bison, woolly mammoths, and saber-toothed uh, cats were grazing or hunting across tundra and grasslands paleo-indian group of hunter-gatherers who eventually gave rise to the clovis people had crossed the land bridge from asia this is what they say uh, again we understand that there have been just mm, <laughs> the distortion is is really mind-blowing because again when we talk about atlantis it wasn't just a single island that went under it was a, it was a global system it was a global system in which extraterrestrial beings came and go 
all, came and went all the time. It was just well known. And so something strange happened about 12,800 years ago, they say, on Earth. It was abruptly plunged back into a deep chill. Temperatures in part of the northern hemisphere plunged as much as 8 degrees Celsius colder than today. The snap lasted 1,200 years, mere blip, and then it ended and it began to warm again. So, you know, they say it was a mystery, but it's not really a mystery. They just don't want to, uh, again, give us the explanations. There's been many floods, and, and that's something else we should uh, recognize. There's been many, many floods. Some flood stories are, are local, and others are uh, talking about more universal events. But when, when you look to what happened, there is evidence of impact. Absolutely, there's evidence of impact. And it's interesting that, again, the mainstream doesn't really want to uh, acknowledge that there's an impact going on. Because if we talk to and we look to the, again, Vedic worldview, it, it speaks of wars amongst the gods. You know, there were benevolent beings that were here. And then there were the dark ones that came, the Asuras, uh, in, in the Vedic tradition, as the good guys were known as the Devas. And, of course, the control system will, will take that root of Devas and turn it into devils because the control system is going to make anything that is good look bad because, you know, they are bad and they're trying to make themselves look good. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Uh, so this is talking about pieces of a comet that most likely exploded in the Earth's atmosphere, triggered raging wildfires, gave us kind of the semblance of a nuclear winter uh, that plunged everything back into uh, a cold snap. It's fascinating, too, how we have nothing but this nonstop climate change, global warming. And the reality is uh, life was more abundant in the periods when we didn't have poles, uh, polar ice, I should say, polar ice. And the oxygen levels were much higher. This is the corresponding times when people lived much longer. Everything on, on the planet lived much longer and grew much bigger. You know, so this is, again, going down. This is a, a scientific article talking about the Younger Dryas event. What was it really? Well, I mean, there's evidence everywhere of it, and, and we can look to that evidence and see it. When we go to the Atrahasis, this is the great flood and the meaning of suffering. What, what did the Sumerians say? Because, again, this is thousands of years older than anything biblical in, in much greater detail. And, and this is the rub, so to speak. Uh, you can see where all the biblical stories come from for the most part. And it's clear in the Atrahasis, the great flood was sent by the gods to destroy human life, plain and simple. That was, that was what happened. This was, this was war on humanity. And in this one, only one good man, Atrahasis, his name translates to exceedingly wise, was warned of impending deluge by the god Enki, also known as Ea, Ea, E-A, R-T-H, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, who instructed him to build an ark to save himself. So that whole thing with Noah, and again, there's there's multiple versions of this story um, with uh, slightly different names given. We talked about uh, Utnapishtim as well, and it gets really interesting with Enkidu, who seems to be kind of... Uh, I don't know, was Enki do some sort of Bigfoot type being? I mean, seriously, or was he just one of those big, giant, red-headed giants? I got to tell you, Enki do sounds like somebody's pet name. <laughs> <laughs> it does, right? So, you know, again, this is, um, this is the oldest story from anything biblical comes from. The Epic of Gilgamesh, they say, was written, you know, perhaps as far back as 2150 B.C. And again, this is these are passed down orally. And, it, you know, again, it says what's what started this? Well, you know, humans had multiplied too much. There were too many humans. They couldn't control them. So the population reached a certain point and it was time to call the humans. Hmm. 
I wonder if that number was eight billion. Mm-hmm. You know, what what's that number? You know, again, what what's the number that triggers them to to bring back the number of humans on the planet? And so, you know, again, this is far older and it's in the plural. So this tells you why the Bible story is speaking in the plural, because it's talking about the same beings. It's talking about those Anunnaki gods. Now, Anunnaki gods are not every god in mythology. That's another thing that um, creates a distortion because, you know, they will, there is a tendency to take somebody like Inanna and equate to Ishtar, uh, equate to Asherah, Astarte, and then equate to Isis, which is totally incorrect. So again, these these beings, uh, uh, in some cases, yes, we are talking about the same being from a different perspective. Other cases, they're very distinct beings. And of course, this is all about them modifying uh, the existing humanoid beings on the planet and creating the um, perfect slave race. And, you know, again, when you look to everything that's going on right now with the cure for the plague upon the land, well, you know, again, it all comes down to D period, N period, A period. 97% of our genome is flipped into the uh, off, uh, off side of things on a purpose. And we see, we, when we look to all the different humanoid beings on the planet, we see dead end after dead end after dead end. Well, it, it's clear why there's dead ends. Some of those beings, you know, were, were, were never uh, even necessarily our ancestors per se, but, but were beings from other places that, that came here. Other ones, you know, were ancestors that simply had too much ability, too much connection uh, to the earth and the natural order of things and did not make good workers. Think about this. What does the government always want to look at? They want to look at labor participation numbers. Why? Well, they want to see how many slaves are actually working in the system. Economics. Think about everything you're brought up with. Well, you could have the American dream. You could you could achieve a house and cars. And, and again, the government can take everything away from you anytime it, it wants to. If you can't pay your taxes or, you know, again, they can simply take it away uh, if there is some sort of emergency named and they decide to take it away. It's just so fascinating to look at the aspect of the plagues, too, because, you know, they send plagues and there's strange clouds that appear in the sky. This is just, you know, this this goes back thousands of years B.C., and, of course, in these days, we, we, we look at, at the uh, engineering, and that term geoengineering was just used recently by one of the control systems tools, you know, one of their cogs, and, and it was used uh, in reference to, well, we could even geoengineer the sun. Ah, yeah, it's just so obvious what's going on, yeah, on, on in the bigger picture here. And so, you know, you can see the, the story. Yeah, first the gods enjoy the leisure of human workers and they, they have plenty of time now, right? But then there's too many. So they decide to lessen the population by first sending a drought. Ah, drought, then pestilence, then famine. Hello, you know, you know that old Austin Powers, who does number two work for? Who do the few work for? Put the few up to the mirror, W period, E period, F period. When you, when you listen to them talking, you're really listening to these gods speak. They're the mouthpieces of these gods. After each of the plagues, the humans appeal to, to the God who first conceived of them, Enki. But th- see, that's again, this is their good cop, bad cop. So, you know, this is where they're going to make Elon out to be a savior. But he's he's not a savior. This is good cop, bad cop. Enlil's the bad cop. Enki's the good cop. It's pretty simple. You know, it, it should be relatively obvious. And so, you know, again, what was this? It was an impact. Absolutely. Was it a comet or was it something else? Did they 
catch an asteroid? Do you use like a tractor beam to send it into Earth? Did they capture a comet, send it into Earth? Was it some sort of rod from the gods? You know, very, very literal point of view. Well, there's a lot of studying and a lot of data that comes back and shows different areas of the planet were uh, affected by by things of that nature. You know, I mean, there's it's undeniable that things have gone on that we are not uh, allowed to understand, we're not allowed to be aware of because that would clue us in as to where we come from and who created us. But so many, so many of the other... Uh, humanoid beings unfortunately their they get their life gets cut off because as a collective there's no stopping evolution you absolutely cannot stop evolution nature will find a way so the best thing for them to do the controllers to do is just chop the head off the snake just stop the evolution in it in its tracks where where that particular stream of beings can can be no more and frighteningly enough, we're reaching a point where we are ev evolving in a very big way. Our light bodies are being turned on. We're starting to understand a lot of our abilities and becoming uncontrollable. And I think this is the part where people need to get very close to the earth because they are going to take, you know, large groups in the cities. That, that really is my biggest concern is the cities because that's the majority of people but if you're one who can live off the earth you can live with the land you can be in harmony with nature that's going to be the best idea for so many people should find that happy place because then you know it's more difficult to just cut life off you can't just cut it off um, and then I, I was just chatting with another family member this morning and how important it is to be able to repurpose everything that you use. I mean, repurpose, I think, is such a wonderful skill and should be utilized everywhere we can. And for so many, unfortunately, school has, um, it, schooling has really kind of taught that out of them. It's made people consumers. So whenever you need something, you just, instead of trying to figure out what you can do with what you have, um, you know, you, you turn and you buy it. And I got to tell you, all those years when I spent in the desert, 25 something odd years, being in a little bitty town of about, you know, anywhere between, depending on if the mines were going or not, 500 to 1,000, 1,500 people, you couldn't just go to the store and get what you needed. And they didn't have what they had. You know, you couldn't just hop online and, and simply order stuff. You became resourceful. You we're forced into so many situations where, oh, you know, you don't have a belt for your car. Your car is broke down. Well, you better start looking and find somebody, somebody with a car that's similar with a broken down. Get their belt so that you can get your car going. I mean, it was just common to become resourceful. But that's something that it, it's better if you have a taste of that before poop hits the fan it's better that you have an idea of how to repurpose things before things get really bad so this is an impact crater in arizona and cindy and i were there and i couldn't get out of the car in the parking lot because i could feel the energy and it gave me such overwhelming anxiety and flashbacks and this whole area um just bothers me more than any uh, area that i've been to I would much rather be in a very, very haunted place than this because this was where people just had no clue of anything. They looked up, it was over. I mean, it was just such massive death on such a fast, large scale. Um, they'll say again, this is a meteor crater. Um, well, really, in my mind, in everything I feel, this was an act of war. And this absolutely uh, killed many, many people that were peaceful <laughs> and totally unsuspecting. And again, this is in Arizona. Um, I could feel the energy when you get to around Winslow. And if you're heading down towards like St. John's, heading down towards Springerville, Eager, uh, Sholo, um, this is where the energy peaks and the death and the destruction was just, you know, uh, unspeakable, honestly. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it was a really rough spot for him. You know, whatever it was uh, that I was able to block out, he simply couldn't. It's like he was reading into it to such a high degree, and that was triggering certain uh, traumas in his DNA, and that's something that can definitely happen. So these are, this is LIDAR images of what they call Carolina Bays. There's over half a million of these in Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. They're all slanted with a northwest to southeast orientation. Um, they're enormous, uh, as you can uh, see right here. The little rectangle in the picture is, is this farm here with nine buildings. So these these are huge. They're all impacts. They are all impacts. What what happened to humanity um, was so traumatic that it caused. Um, I think it did bring on some amnesia. I think there was a purposeful amnesia. I think there was also uh, something that we, when we can't face something and it's so hurtful, you tend to block it out. That's that's huge. I mean, that's something that unfortunately happens to a lot of people where something is going on in their lives or you know something has happened and you simply cannot look at it because and, and higher self will do that higher self will block things out and i think that's what's been done here on a much higher degree and that's why so many people are probably afraid that you know on some level of their energy body this has been experienced this huge trauma has been experienced so they just block it out. They're not going to look at it. They're not going to entertain it because they can't. They're, they're not ready. They need to function. So they just go forward. They take whatever is in front of them and they, you know, don't, they don't feel those feelings. Hence, they don't heed the other warnings that, you know, we might be headed in a bad direction. They just can't see. Absolutely. As you can see, all these different impacts. I mean, massive. This was a huge event. And this was uh, absolutely a culling uh, of the of the human population, as you can see here, all the way out into Nebraska, and you can see the Saginaw crater here. This was huge. This was absolutely huge, uh, and and again, it led to such a massive loss of life. This is still not the biggest because the biggest really was the destruction of Tiamat. And they have, you know, again, we're in the middle of an intergalactic war uh, and we're basically finding ourselves behind enemy lines in this war as we are in an occupied planet. And it's controlled by the dark side at this moment in time. As you see this again, this is why we, we are looking at so many different creatures that just disappear and they're gone from history. And so, you know, again, what, what caused this to happen? It, it makes me uh, a laugh in some ways when they, they say, you know, well, everybody came over across that land, land bridge during the Ice Age. No, no, no. You know, of course, the Americas have been populated again. There were global civilizations that could move about at will. I mean, they had fl technology to fly. They had technology to leave the planet. You know, again, this is such a distortion that we see going on. Absolutely. It was a cosmic impact. And it's so clear when you look at the LIDAR images, then it all of a sudden looks like we're looking at the surface of Mars or something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. When they say, oh, sorry, E.T. fans, interstellar, interstellar visitor Oumuamua isn't an alien spacecraft after all. It's just passing gas. Yeah, so they, they're <laughs> what they give us for this interstellar object coming in and just like scientists have diagrammed, would come in, get close to the sun, use it to increase its rate of speed use the gravitational effect of the sun to slingshot it off on a new trajectory exactly like scientists had theorized we would do when we're doing interstellar travel no it's it's not an alien spacecraft it, it just had a timely eruption of gas mm -hmm. and that caused it to to go off yeah leaking hydrogen they think we're idiots they think we'll buy anything. And in, in ages past, we did buy anything, but, but we're not going to buy it anymore. 
And so, you know, Cindy could also, and she did scan and, and look. And yes, there were reptilians manning this ship. You know, and they, they just, they weren't really nice. And I just saw a little something here. Um, you know, I think back in 2017, August of 2017, when we had that eclipse, this here so happened to just to be and also we are looking at another eclipse coming up in april and it just so happens to be there's another um entity that is looks like it's coming to town with horns so you know i mean why do these follow the eclipses that's kind of curious to me yeah absolutely yeah it is a ship you know it obviously is a ship i mean you had so many scientists saying it had to be a ship but no it's just passing gas and when we look to what they call the devil comet this was just published this november 15th it's heading our way and that's okay it looks big and weird but comet ponds brooks is no danger sky watchers are excited you know the one that sprouted devil horns that's coming from the constellation of draco again now these comets bad omens why because it just seemed like whenever there was a comet there was death destruction pestilence plagues impacts bad things happen bad things happen and you know they might say we're going to pass through its uh tail and we don't know what it's is in its tail and you know maybe there's something that maybe there's oh they'll, they'll say maybe there's viruses in that tail maybe there's bacteria in that tail and if people all of a sudden start coming down really, really sick, well, it, it was probably just because of, you know, we passed through the tail of the comet. Ah, yeah. In reality, who's to say it's not a ship that's, that's releasing something? This is the bigger, you know, again, picture. They want you thinking God is this nice, you know, guy with... Uh, a long white beard and he's floating around in the, in the clouds and he's watching everything yeah that's what they want you to think the rea reality is you know these are extraterrestrial beings they're extraterrestrials and so this comet is going to again be here when at the same time as the last eclipse april the last eclipse is april 8th and you know we are talking about the end of the united Na the united states as we know it as we know it um and also the end of a system but the beginning of another system it's also a, a marker uh, and and part of that marker the biggest thing about this marker is the fact that it's really the time period when humans will know again that you know we're not alone and it's the return of of the quote unquote gods, the the ones that these stories are all talking about. You know, you think about it. You might have you might have indigenous people if they came and they saw like a, a plane coming and going, and a plane coming and going at a regular interval, or a train, or a boat. You know, a boat comes and it goes. And they make note of it that it seems to come at a certain interval all the time. And they maybe even would would begin to look for that, that boat coming or that train or that plane coming. Now, to humans that know, well, you know, there's going to be a cruise that's going to go out of this port and so and so a time. That, that's nothing big. That's nothing miraculous. That's, that's nothing that needs a god to explain it. It could be the same thing with these these quote unquote comets that orbit. They're literally ships coming and going on regular basis with regular schedules. Ah, the reveal. Find yourself a good little place. This bunny's got a good place, nice and secure, ready for anything. Just sitting back and relaxing and I'm gonna watch the show. Yeah, he's not worried. He's blended with the earth. He's just got everything he needs to have and yeah, looks like he's going to take a nap when he needs to. It looks like he's going to eat when he wants to because he can. Absolutely. So we look forward to your comments. Again, we thank you guys for your support over on Patreon. Couldn't do it without you guys in these times. Stay prepared. Keep the vibes high. We will get through this period. 
Much love. Source bless. Namaste. Namaste.